Hello and welcome on my channel, Bot for Aqua, your channel about horticulture, aquaponics and aquaculture. In this video we are talking about stocking density, so how many fish you have in your fish tank. Because recently somebody wrote underneath my video where I present my fish system that the uh, catfishes were very dense and tied together and that would be kind of animal cruelty. And that's why I thought, oh, I think that's a very good reason to make a video about stocking density. So enjoy the video! The stocking density gives you an indicator of how much biomass of fish is living per volume unit. So it's usually given in kilogram per cubic meter, uh, sometimes also in kilogram per square meter, but this unit is commonly used in pond culture and here especially when you culture shrimps, because uh, shrimp ponds are usually a little bit more shallow than uh, other systems and that's why it's more important to have the surface area instead of the volume. That's why in shrimp culture and sometimes also in carp, the uh, unit for the stocking density is in a kilogram per square meter and not in kilogram per cubic meter. But what is the stocking density depending on? So the stocking density depends on the fish species, the age and the size of the fishes. For some species it's even recommended to have a certain density because then aggressive behavior is suppressed. Here two examples are for example the tilapia or African catfish. So if you have for example in tilapia a very low density, so just a few individuals on a big fish tank, it's very common that a male tilapia is getting aggressive and really makes himself a territory and as soon as somebody else is swimming in his territory he is really chasing the whole fish and sometimes even kills the fish. And that's why you can prevent that kind of behavior if you have a certain density in your fish tank then you can suppress this uh, aggressive behavior. Or if you have an aggressive fish, all these aggressions go on a larger group of fishes and so in the individual um, amount of aggression that the fish receives is lower. Another example is the uh, African catfish. The African catfish comes, like the name is indicating already, from Africa and if they're uh, during the dry season the water is just evaporating, uh, then actually all these fish in the remaining tiny mud pools of water are clumped together and they're really very very dense together um, and uh, that's why this fish can handle actually a pretty high stocking density and that's why also these fishes because of this adaptation to drought periods in Africa these fishes can, raised, can be raised in a very very high density in recirculation systems nowadays so sometimes we are talking about 300 kilograms per cubic meter of fish that you can raise with African catfish um, by the way, another adaptation of that drought tolerance or drought adaptation is that this African catfish is able to breathe air. So they have like a, a broccoli organ, they call it, uh, inside their head and with them they can actually gasp air and get the oxygen from the air. So they do not need their gills. Um, and that's also very reasonable because if you see uh, what is left of water in the end of the drought period in Africa, if there is water left, it's more like a mud pool where normal fish with gills actually cannot breathe anywhere at all. More about the African catfish in another video. So the stocking density is different between a commercial aquaculture operation and the backyard aquaponics farm, of course. right? In a commercial operation you need to make money with the fish at the end of the day and that's why you need to use your cubic meter of productive volume as effective as possible. Furthermore, the stocking density is also really dependent on the cultural system that you are using. For example, there are flow-through systems where you have just water, fresh water going through your tank and out again and gets replaced by fresh water every minute again. Or you have a recirculation system or you have an open net pan or a pond culture. So your cultural system and how you run the system is also really determining your stocking density. Usually in recirculation systems the stocking density is the highest. So I made for you a small table with uh, stocking densities of a certain fish species. Here that is mainly applying to uh, European uh, fish cultures that I visited and I saw. Uh, on the left side you see the cultural system, then the fish species and the stocking density given in kilogram per cubic meter. And the first one is uh, the tilapia of a recirculation system. Here you can see many times uh, stocking densities between 50 and 120 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, and the second one is the African catfish uh, that I mentioned earlier already. And here stocking densities are many times between 50 and 250 kilograms, though there are also studies where they went up to even 600 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, and then you literally have more fish than water in your tank. 
But I think that is like super high intensity and uh, I'm personally not a big fan of that high identities for fish culture. Uh, of course then you have other species like uh, the European catfish, uh, you also have uh, the eel, eel uh, like the European eel speaking, uh, also pretty high density between 100 and 200 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, then you have for example um, a flow through system for trout, uh, here the densities are usually between 10 and 30 kilograms per cubic meter, uh, it depends on the technology that you're also applying. Uh, for example there's another flow through system for trout and that is uh, after a certain label, like a Naturland label, which is kind of a German label for more sustainable raised uh, products. And there the maximum density that they allow is like 20 kilograms per cubic meter. Of course, then you also have an open net pen, uh, many times used here in Europe for, uh, for salmon production. And there the densities are between 20, 50 kilograms per cubic meter. Sometimes even less, sometimes more. So all the densities that you can see here now is just a kind of a range of densities that you can see. Uh, and they should not be seen as fixed numbers. Uh, and they, they, they can be always a little bit higher, but they can also be lower on the other side. Uh, as last, I have the Panoris vaname, like a shrimp culture. So this is a, it's a specific white leg shrimp, uh, most likely the most cultured shrimp in recirculation systems. Uh, and here you have the density given in uh, kilograms per square meter, and that is around about four to seven kilograms. Uh, just a short note. If you go much higher than this per volume unit or per square meter of shrimp, uh, you can see like tiny black spots because these shrimps have kind of a horn and then they poke each other and then you get a black spots and that does not look very appealing if you want to eat those shrimps later on. So if you want to sell them, of course, it's not look, looking very appealing. That's why, um, in my opinion, also the density in the shrimp culture is kind of limited at those kind of uh, ranges. <clears throat> so with a certain stocking density, also a certain technology needs to come along. So you can support with just normal aeration or like a trickling filter, stocking density is between 50 and 60 kilograms per cubic meter. Everything higher needs pure or technical oxygen. <clears throat> and to apply technical oxygen, you need kind of an oxygen cone or a low head oxygenator where you actually oversaturate the water with pure oxygen. So you have oxygen concentrations of 120, 130% in your water compared to normal atmospheric pressure. Uh, and with these high levels of oxygen, you can uh, support a higher biomass of fish in your cultural system. However, as higher your stocking density is, as more risky it becomes and more fragile it is. So in those high density systems, especially in those systems where you have fish that breathe normally with the gills, so not African catfish that can breathe air, so just fish that need to breathe from the water, uh, it is very, very important that you always have spare parts around, like for circulation pumps. You always have an uh, energy backup generator there in case you have a blackout, so you can easily fire that one up and you have uh, electricity going again and your whole circulation keeps running. And of course, you, sh you definitely need to have pure oxygen on hand. So when, when everything breaks, you still can open the tap from your pressurized oxygen container and you can release pure oxygen, at least for a certain amount of time to your system to keep your fish alive. By the way, one of the first things you also should do when you have a problem in your system, stop feeding. You don't want to have the, the fish uh, keep eating or feeding even uh, because uh, through the digestion, the oxygen consumption also goes high. So the first thing you do is when you have a problem in your system, you stop feeding, just as a short note. So in case you have a problem, you should be around in your system within 20 minutes because after 20 minutes, the first fish depending on the density, start to die. That's why it's important, whoever runs the system, the technical manager, whoever is really responsible for the fish culture, should be living close by and should be at least within 20 minutes in the system and should start acting to support the fishes. So many times, together with animal welfare, stocking density is criticized and that is kind of an animal cruelty thing. Uh, and by definition, like animal cruelty is like if you, uh, give pain without any reason to a fish, if you kill a fish without a valid reason or let me have a quick lost, uh, look or if you just uh, torture the fish without any reason, just out of fun. That is animal cruelty in my opinion. So with the definition of animal cruelty in mind, you should always um, choose your stocking density in such a way that your fishes uh, always have intact fins, they have, should not have any bite marks, 
So it should be having a healthy physical condition and your mortality should be basically zero. However, in many commercial aquacultures, you have a certain mortality and that is usually in a very low one percentages. So one digit percentages, like maybe 1%, 2%, 3% at the most. Ideally, your mortality should be zero. For example, in my catfish system, all my fishes are having completely intact fins. There are no bite marks and the mortality so far is zero. Well, mortality induced by the system, let's say it like that. I got one fish out and I had landed on the dining table already, but that's a different type of mortality that I'm talking about. Just a small uh, side note, when we talk about stress, how can we actually measure stress in fish? So, um, of course, you can have a subjective view in your fish tank and see how the fishes are behaving, if they are stressed, are they eating, are they behave abnormally then compared to normal standards. And furthermore, there's also this possibility uh, to take a blood sample and look for indicators in the blood. So you can check for cortisol and glucose levels in the, in the blood of the fish. And these values can give you an indication if the fish is stressed or not. Uh, just as a small side information. So uh, it's not that easy to determine if the fish is stressed or not in a uh, backyard system, of course it's not, but uh, in a commercial system or for experiments, that's uh, ways how you can determine if a fish is stressed or not. So now I would like to challenge you a little bit. So here is the footage from my aquaponics system in 2012. Basically the end of the season because the water is already pretty cold, that's why the species are moving very slow. And what is your estimation? How high is the density in this fish tank? I'm very, very curious what you estimate, what your estimate is. And please let me know what your estimate in kilogram per cubic meter is uh, in the comment section. I'm very, very curious to see what your guess is, how high the stocking density there is. So let's assume the fish tank has a volume of one cubic meter. Uh, and uh, I will let you know later on what the stocking density in this tank was. So before I give you now my recommendation for maximum density in a backyard system, just one short thing. I would really, really like if you subscribe and like and ring the bell for my channel. Every new subscriber is a huge booster of motivation for me. I still get a notification on my phone like, hey, this, this person subscribed to your channel. And it's like, yes, I'm very, very happy about each of you. So if you want to do me a favor, I would be very, very happy and motivated if you subscribe, like and ring the bell for my channel. So for a home aquaponics gardening system, what kind of stocking density would I recommend? So I would, rec I would recommend do not go higher than 20 or 30 kilograms per cubic meter because as higher you get, as more fragile your system will be. Look, if you have, let's say, a stocking density of 40 or 50 kilograms and your fish cannot breathe air like the African catfish uh, and your energy system fails, you are in trouble. So you have just a very, very short time frame where you can act to save and secure your fishes. And as higher your density is, as shorter this time frame gets. So, and again, you should also have for your own system always certain spare parts uh, available like air pumps and circulation pumps, but also ideally uh, um, an energy um, power plant like, um, what is it called? Like an uh, energy aggregate, uh, like a small machine that gives you electricity for worst case scenarios. Or if you want to do it really, really right, get yourself a bottle of pure oxygen and a diffuser to uh, yeah, give oxygen supply for your fishes in case they really, really need it. So I would recommend a density for the backyard aquaponics not higher than 20 or 30 kilograms per cubic meter. And even that is for many people already a lot of fish per volume unit. And always keep in mind, as higher your density gets, as more fragile your system is to mistakes and errors. Where, whether they are from uh, human errors or from technical errors, so a pump fails or you have a blackout, or something else breaks. So in these cases, if you have a high density, this time buffer where you can have time to act to secure your fish is getting shorter and shorter. So I'd rather have a lower density, but better sleep in case something breaks, right? Just my two cents. So if you have any questions or comments in regard of stocking density, please let me know in the comment section below the video. And then I hope to see you in the next video. And ciao.